It wasn't a surprise in the sense that we were planning on, on repeating our, our, our win of 2019. We felt overwhelming support and most people know campaigns are about data and you know we built all of that data two years ago and after three weeks of canvassing the data was indicative of the fact that Milton was still very supportive of me particularly uh, but also of the Liberal Party and our platform so uh, that allowed me to travel to some neighboring ridings a little bit sometimes in the mornings or sometimes after a canvas here in Milton to help out my neighbors and my future colleagues and that paid off really well because we're looking over at like Markham Unionville for example um, they won uh, first time in a long time uh, neighboring riding that I visited uh, Aurora Oak Ridges Richmond Hill Leah Taylor Roy big win there so teamwork makes the dream work and it certainly makes the dream work here too I've got to thank first and foremost my 200 amazing volunteers we had 200 unique volunteers so many young people came down to this office after school or on the weekend uh, to volunteer their time to go out and knock on doors and to make a difference and you know what's really cool about that is that youth under 18 making a difference in democracy without having the vote they decided you know that they wanted to have a progressive government they decided that they wanted somebody who believes in climate change who speaks up on important social issues they wanted a government that was focused on housing prices and their future so they came out knock on doors for me and for the liberal party to make a difference and i bet you each of them probably got five or six votes it's extraordinary the young people on this campaign were just amazing so you know and having said that then what has this in this campaign what has it done to motivate you to decide what are the first, the next steps um, once uh, the House of Commons resumes? What are some of the things that you want to tackle then? Well, I appreciate that. Um, I want to get back to my work on sport because I, I brought forth um, a project that I guess I can call Canada's Active Recovery, which is an $80 million project over the next two years for, for community grassroots enrollment in sport from an equity perspective to make sure, you know, that every youth across the country has access to sport, physical activity and recreation. Um, and that'll have an impact here in Milton, but it'll have a bigger impact in, in under-resourced communities, uh, inner city, you know, indigenous communities, more rural or, or remote communities that just don't have the infrastructure. Um, they need help uh, to make sure that they've got the programming and the consistency and the coaching uh, that youth really res like rely on and will respond well to. That's a social development project, it's a physical and mental health project, and I think it'll have ramifications uh, for so many youth across the country. Um, but I also want to get focused on housing prices because Milton's are, um, you know, admittedly out of control, which benefits homeowners but doesn't benefit future home purchasers or renters so we've got to stay focused on that and that's ongoing work that I've been doing with uh, the region of Halton um, but there's so many other things the fight against climate change is never second on my list um, you know truth and reconciliation has a local lens and also one across this country and I was thrilled to be on the Indigenous Northern Affairs Committee in the last mandate so I hope to be able to continue that work as well in a different context but it's all about responding to local Milton's needs and by knocking on 100,000 doors in the last six weeks. We've got a lot of insight and perspective to go back to Ottawa with. Perfect. And I guess uh, just last question here then. I mean, it seemed like, and it's I'm pro probably putting you on the spot here, but not much change in terms of the numbers. We did gain more seats, so it seems like we pretty much have the minority that we had before. And I guess if for those that are watching out there who are quite critical of this election, um, I'm sure you've heard some who were wondering why we were going to election now. What do you say to those people now that this is all over? Well, what I will say is that the ballot box question in 2019 is nothing similar to the one in 2021. You know, the, the pandemic landed in our country and our government was tasked with building us out of it. Um, we are, you know, I think I can confidently say we're at the other end of it, but we're not out of the woods yet. And we needed a mandate and we went back to Canadians to ask, what direction do you want to go from here? And they have trusted the Liberal government, the Liberal Party to end the fight against COVID-19. And I think that's really important to recognize. Look, democracy is never easy and democracy is never free. But Canadians deserved an opportunity to weigh in on our collective path forward. And there were different options. The path forward that the NDP and the Conservative Party and the Liberal Party offered Canadians were different. And that's a democratic choice that everybody had. And ultimately they said, we like the direction that we're on and we want to keep going in this direction. But what I'd, what I'd say is, it's not the exact same parliament. You know, we lost a few really, really great members. Mary Monsef's not coming back to the House of Commons, which is a huge hit to me personally. She's my dad's MP and she's also a good friend. And she's one of the only Afghan voices in the House of Commons, which, um, you know, especially right now, it hurts. 
And I heard from some of our, uh, our Afghan community here in Milton yesterday that they're sad to see her not coming back. But I know that she'll continue to have a really strong voice in Canada. Um, but we also had some, some key members of cabinet retire uh, from politics, like Navdeep Baines and Catherine McKenna. Uh, but we also had Bernadette Jordan not get re-elected out, out east. So we need a strong and robust and active cabinet. And it required, you know, an election to get us back there. And here we are. And I don't think we can ever take democracy or an election for granted. People fought for those freedoms. And I'm glad that we had the opportunity to go back to Canadians and ask, what direction do you want to go? And I'm glad we're going forward.